Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Rail link between Amsterdam and Brussels branded disastrous Corruption and backhanders are the norm claim officials investigating Pompeii restoration project Britain has become the migrant magnet of Europe More financial fudgery as the EU legislates more fiscal controls on the credit and bond markets Plus, we have more new letters from the UNIT community. This one is from Sonia J. Porter. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First up from our homepage, this article considers the wisdom of investment in the FIRA high-speed train. Apparently, this new high-speed train service has been dogged with reliability problems and since the service it superseded was terminated in December, has left travellers out in the cold. The article also goes on to highlight the high cost of tickets, although our super-elite members of the European Galactic Federation are not going to be subject to such charges as they were given a substantial discount. <laughs> I wonder if that discount will be considered when they claim their expenses. The restoration of Pompeii appears to have erupted in conflict as officials claim the project has been overshadowed by corruption. Efforts to restore the Roman city have come under scrutiny as police have launched an investigation into allegations of corruption. Anna Maria Kakova, one of the restoration company's executives, is currently under house arrest. This article has the full details. Immigration numbers into Britain have soared over the last decade, making the UK the migrant magnet of Europe. This hard-nosed article looks at the stark facts in regard to the UK immigration since EU legislation breached the UK border controls. This is astonishing reading and the numbers are almost biblical. Reports show that 536,000 long-term immigrants arrived in Britain and that's just in 2012. One interesting aspect is the total lack of control the UK government has over its British borders, and I quote, The government is making huge efforts to get the numbers under control, but it is not going to be easy given that Britain has become the destination of choice in Europe. Full details are in the article. Links are below. 1. The kleptocrats at the Commission are working hard to action their fiscal takeover. As you'll recall, I reported last week on the Commission's pressing attempts to take control of the credit ratings from pseudo-independents such as Standard & Poor and Moody's, which would simply hand even more power to the global banksters. Well, this report that our researcher John spotted is directly linked to the fiscal takeover agenda. Here's the key phrase, and I quote, Institutions should not adopt investment rules that would automatically lead to the sale of assets in the event of a downgrade in their creditworthiness by an external credit rating agency. What this does is provide an instrument through which the EU can control and mandate the sale of national assets in the event of a default. In its direct interpretation, it is stating that the automatic selling of assets once borrowing limits are breached would no longer apply. In application, however, it gives the EU legal powers to breach its own regulations and continue borrowing, or worse still, default without loss. Ultimately, the EU kleptocrats might think that they're being clever behind the closed doors of the Commission, but the markets will out this line of legislation, as I have just done, and this will undermine confidence and further the collapse. Check out the report for the details. We always welcome your letters and points of view. Today we have a brilliant and very well-informed letter from Sonia J. Porter. In it, Sonia brings to our attention the special European police force, Eurogen 4. The situation is deeply worrying. European Gendarmerie Force is an armed police and militia whose purpose and training is designed for domestic deployment in case of civil unrest. This letter demonstrates clearly how far our EU elites have got in developing their totalitarian government. Today, the UK people have had no guarantee from the ministers or the parliament of Britain that Eurogen 4 will not be deployed in the UK, despite having been directly asked. 
Thanks go to Sonia Porter for writing such an excellent letter, complete with supporting facts and references. Links to the letter are below. Today in our video library, Dr. Eric Edmund returns with his views on the globalists and multinational corporates and weighs up the difficulties that the battle for democracy will have to face in tackling these giants with huge budgets and enormous political sway. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit, And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word programme is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis, for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.